Okay, we're gonna we're gonna call this meeting to order. Uh, we'll start roll call from the left. Homer, city council member. Mike Warrington, city council member. Shelby Carcelary, city council member. Ronnie Price, mayor. Brooke Daber, city council president. Tim Berry, city council member. <clears throat> okay. Invocation is going to be tonight by Pastor Rick Newberry from Baptist First Baptist Church of Augusta. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Would you bow your heads with me? 
Heavenly and gracious Father, we thank you for um, the opportunity we have tonight to gather together. We thank you for the abundant blessings in our life, including freedom, freedom to elect those who would lead us, and freedom to assemble and to share our thoughts and concerns. Tonight, we lift up our city council um, to you, our mayor, all of our city officials. Um, we ask that you would grant them the wisdom to um, be wise, have great wisdom in times of conflicting interests, um, difficult times. We pray that you would grant them wisdom. We ask that you would help them to work in harmony and to listen to others, have a true sense of the needs of the people of Andover, that they would work in harmony, that you would give them peace in their lives, especially for Councilwoman Carsaway, whose mother has passed away this weekend. We ask for a peace in her life as well. And Lord, that what they do tonight um, would just bring joy into their life, the task that they have at hand. We set the council agenda before you tonight. Pray that you would watch over it and bless and keep them in your will. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Rick. I appreciate you. All right. Let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, if we will. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, as always, we're going to open up for public forum. Uh, I know there's people here that would like to speak on half of the pit bulls. Uh, we'll wait and do that uh, on item number 10, all right? But if you have anything else you'd like to speak to, speak to us about, feel free to come up, state your name, uh, your address, and... Keep it short, please. <clears throat> Nobody? All right. Public hearing closed. Ac acceptance of agenda. Mr. Mayor, um, as you saw, we did update your packet this or afternoon with the results of our bid sale this morning. Um, we also had a little bit of cleanup on the pay plan. There were a couple errors in the one you received this weekend, so we did update that as well. Um, but I do need to actually add an item, an executive session, if we could add that at the end of the agenda. Mr. Mayor, I do move, I move that we accept the agenda um, as presented with an addition of the uh, executive session, um, item number 14.5. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. All right. <clears throat> uh, consent, I'm sorry, seven, consent agenda. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to uh, approve the consent agenda, items 7.1 through 7.4 as presented. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. All right, on to 8-1. <clears throat> 2020 budget hearing, uh, reset public hearing date. And Donna's going to talk to us about that via... I believe she should be on Zoom. I don't know if we've got her. If there she is. Yeah. There I am. Um, there was an error that we did not get the notification published. So we needed to move this to the next council meeting on the 22nd. And the publication has been sent to the newspaper at this point already. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I move to set a new public hearing date for Tuesday, December 22nd of 2020 for the public or for the public hearing dates second any further discussion all in favor say aye aye aye, aye. all opposed motion carries five zero <clears throat> general obligation bond series c 2020 9.1 bond sale jenny and jt and dustin right yep dustin has now joined us your zoom screen has been replaced by dustin in a car so um <laughs> we'll let him share the very good news on your bond sale that occurred earlier today item 9.1 thank you jenny uh 
Uh, good evening, Mayor, Council Members. Uh, good to be with you again. I'm going to sound like a broken record once again for the third time this year, but again, it uh, still went very, very well. And surprise, rates are still low, so that's a, that's a certainly a good thing. Um, today's sale was no different. Um, we had eight bids. I'm sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six bids. Um, all went really, really well. Um, got the the worst bid. So on a 20 year bond issue, the worst bid I believe was actually I'm missing a page. There's eight bids. Yeah. Um, the worst bid on a 20 year bond issue is a 1.6 percent. So put that into pers some perspective. Um, the best bid, so the bidder providing the lowest interest rate to the city, um, was a 1.26 percent for 20 years. So again, uh, very incredible. Um, that bidder was Robert W. Baird. Um, so certainly we would suggest, uh, given the results of today's sale, that um, the city proceed with awarding uh, the bonds um, to Robert W. Baird. On a side note, just real quick, obviously there's been a lot of bond issues and bond issuances this year, and a lot of these conversations go back to um, the time at which COVID was beginning, and so we've had three separate series of bonds. There's been a lot of work put into this by city staff and in your bond council, uh, Triple Wolf, and so it, my appreciation goes out to all of our work and getting these documents and everything ready to obviously uh, produce results that ended up being very, very favorable to the city. So thank you to all those involved. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I move to award the purchase of the GOB Series C 2020 bonds in the total principal amount of $3,745,000 to Robert W. Baird and Company Incorporated at the net interest cost of $713,929. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. 9.2, authorizing insurance ordinance. Um, maybe I'm... Is, is 9.2 not, I'm sorry, the issuance ordinance. I'm we, sorry, Mr. We can Mayor, just that, go on. That's what, that's what confused me. Yeah. I think you said insurance, and I oh, wanted I'm to make sorry. sure it was the issuance, issuance ordinance, Insta and that's what had me I'm confused. I'm sorry, I can't so, read. I, I, no, it's all right. It's fine. I apologize. I, I, I should have known what you meant, so I apologize. I can just make a motion on it and the next one as well. Mr. Mayor. I move to approve ordinance authorizing the issuance of Series C 2020 general obligation bonds of the city of Andover, Kansas. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I move to approve the resolution describing the form and details of Series C 2020 general obligation bonds of the city of Andover, Kansas as presented. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. 9-3, authorizing bond resolution. Run 10. Mr. Mayor, that's what we just did, yeah. Man, I'm so confused right now. Who's in charge? You are, Mr. Mayor. You are, sir. All right, 10. Oh, here we go. So uh, uh, before we move on to this, uh, I'll give, uh, uh, I'll open up public forum. Uh, again, state your name, your address. Uh, try not to be redundant, please, and uh, we're glad to hear from you. So, anybody?
My name's uh, Megan Barlett, and my address is 530 South Highland Drive, um, 67002, in case you knew that, too. <laughs> so, yeah, I live in Andover. Um, I want to give my support and encourage our council to lift the pit bull ban. I'm asking our council to utilize our breed neutral vicious animal ordinance as it emphasizes on public safety and individual accountability. Currently, when Andover police are dealing with pit bulls and pit bull type dogs in our community, they're mostly doing so to inform the owner they're prohibited and must get rid of them, and not because of behavioral issues from the dog or mistreatment from the owner. I would like for our city to instead use a more productive and effective approach by consistent enforcement of dangerous dog and reckless owner ordinances in our community. And that's all I have to say. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. My name is Daytona Johnson, and my address is 1001 North Andover Road, Andover. Um, I just want to uh, say that I would love for the ban to be lifted. I think that the vicious dog laws that we have in place are good enough. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Diana McCann, and I live at 1006 East Paul Revere Lane, Andover. <coughs> and I just want to say I'd love the ban to be lifted, too. Um, we're in the, the uh, bicentennial edition where um, we had a pit bull before at, at, and they annexed us. And so I'm very thankful that we got to keep our dog. Um, she's just a big baby, and I want to um, second what the other two ladies said, then I won't be redundant, because <laughs> I agree with both of them. Mm -hmm. But so we've had um, our Bailey now in the, quote, city of Andover for over a year, and it's been, it's been okay. I mean, you know, we're, we're responsible dog owners, we have three dogs, but only one pit. And I think if you look at the, the dog owners and not the breed, then you, you get a lot more accomplished. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Lisa. I live at 7448 Southwest 60th Street in Augusta. Um, but since I am a Butler County resident, I do have a pit bull mix dog and I like to utilize the Andover Dog Park here. And I just recently found out that pit bulls were not allowed at the park. And um, it's just, it's such a long drive to have to drive to Wichita just to let my dog run around and let some energy out, even though she's as sweet as can be. And I've never had a single problem there with her. And um, yeah, I just like to see the ban be lifted and just look to it more of an individual basis uh, based on each individual dog's aggressiveness rather than just assuming that a single breed will be aggressive. Okay, so, thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, my name is Catherine Stiles, or Katie Stiles. Um, I live at 804 North Phillips. I agree with everything that everyone has said. I just want to be able to put my name on the list, so then you'll know I agree. Thank you, Ms. Stiles. Hi, my name is Dawn Searles. I live at 1618 West Browning in Andover, and I too am in support of the pit bull ban being lifted. 
My daughter has two pit bulls that live in Wichita and they are the most sweetest things ever. There's not a vicious bone in their bodies. We recently um, decided to get another puppy in our household and we would have considered getting a pit. We wanted to get a pit, but we weren't able to just because of the pit bull ban. So thank you. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Any more? All right, I just want to acknowledge that uh, we, uh, uh, council and, and myself um, had 17 responses by email. Uh, three were to keep the current uh, ban in place and 14 to lift the band. Uh, and I just want to assure everyone that's not here that I read through every, every, each and every one of these and, and, uh, and all their uh, concerns. So uh, even, even if you were uh, outnumbered, I still read and, and appreciate your comments. All right. All right. So uh, public hearing closed. Um, <clears throat> this has been a difficult subject for a long time, all right? And uh, it's one that we, uh, we, uh, we addressed and we'll vote on tonight. So 10.1 pit bull ban repeal ordinance. Mr. Mayor, yes, sir. I have a statement and a question. Okay. Um, one is uh, one of the people who sent an email asked about uh, responsibility if any dog were to go into somebody else's yard and um, either maul their dog or destroy property, that kind of thing. And, and JT did respond spawned and and it was kind of common sense but whoever owns the dog is responsible for any destruction of anything in somebody else's yard and then the second item would be i thought that we had um, a requirement i don't know if it was through ordinance or not that to use the dog park if you're not a resident that you have to have registration here is that I feel like that was something we talked about a long time ago. Chief? No? Chief's not aware of it. Okay. We're, we're, not, we're not sure, but we're, we're, we're checking. We, we, know, we know it was discussed. I, I think your recollection of the discussion is, cor is correct. A Council long time ago. I just, yeah. I just don't remember whether it was ultimately incorporated in the code. Okay, um, and I think the, the discussion went towards something like if someone does come in from out of the city and there is a dog issue, dog attacks somebody or another, they don't live here, there's no registration, they just leave, you have no idea then. So there was talk, if I recall, about in order to use the dog park, you at least need to get something. But I'm not saying we should do that. I'm just, I thought that might have been something that was already in the books. Mr. President? Yeah. Maybe we should also note that just for the people at home and, and watching that JT, when you refer to JT, he's the legal counsel for the city. Yeah. Yes, JT is the amazing legal counsel <laughs> for the city, yes. And it's his birthday today. I just thought that. Birthday, out. yes. <clears throat> I can't imagine spending it any differently. Oh. <laughs> huh. <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, I, I do recall that um, th there are two occasions that there are ordinances uh, which included the ability by resolution to set rules for the park, and there are rules posted um, uh, on the dog park, um, which we will check after this meeting uh, because we're not able to access every resolution uh, typically electronically if it's not incorporated in the code. The code allows the council to make rules from time to time as necessary to govern the operations of the parks by resolution, as I recall. And it, it, it does appear the last rule for the dog park is that the Andover dog parks are limited to use by dogs permitted and licensed in the city of Andover only. Um, I think the I mean, enforcement the of that is going to be rather difficult. For dog to get it licensed and then uh, you can go to the dog park from that point forward, no matter where you live. So, so, so what it requires is that you get an Andover dog license, yeah. that, that, that it be licensed uh, uh, to be in the park. And this, of course, um, assures uh, 
among other things, uh, rabies vaccinations as necessary. And so that was the yeah. that was the conversation at the time when the resolution was placed in force. And that 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 rule would would not change in connection with this ordinance. Cool. And I appreciate your bringing it up since it was the <coughs> subject of, of of a public comment, so that everybody knows the rules and and can get their dog properly licensed. I remember us talking about that. I, just, I didn't know if that was something we had actually put in or not, too. So, you probably should should and not just leave it as a little line item on the bottom of a sign somewhere. Yeah, I think at some point, not tonight, but. Um, I have something. That, a few things here. Uh, if Troy, are you done? Not okay. All right. Um, this is just some stats that I had put together and. But uh, one, of the, one of the stats is there are, are 106 cities in Kansas that has a pit, pit bull ban. So um, that's not every city, but that's 106 cities in the state that does. And so far in 2020, there's been 46 deaths that has been recorded uh, by pit bulls from the age of four weeks old to 86 years old. Then 320 reported attacks by pit bulls this year up till October 22nd. And some of the ones that I've been reading, reading through, which was, um, these were pretty sad. I read through all 46 of these deaths and how it happened, how old the, uh, the person was, um, what date it was on, they gave the circumstances, and uh, most of them are pretty chilling. And if anybody will, you know, council would like to read those, uh, uh, I have them all. But, you know, um, and, and many of them say, um, uh, there was a two-year-old who was mauled to death by a family pit bull. Um, there was a six month old that was fatally attacked by a family pit bull. 11 year old. I mean, there's, there's all different ages. Uh, an 86 year old who was ramp rampage attacked by by two family pit, pit bulls. A one year old who was killed by a family pit bull. And this was overnight. Um, they had you know, they had their child because they were upset and in the, like the little swing right by their bed just to you know, keep them moving and the pit bull attacked them in the middle of the night. Seven month old. Four four a week old. October second, twenty twenty. In New Mexico. Two month old. Also in another swing. And one of these, um, one of these kids that were also killed, they had also attacked the great grandmother, who was 77 years old, and uh, beautifully, beautifully um, hurt the, the great grandmother as well, but had, had killed the child. So we've had this ban for, for many, many years. I don't, I don't know how many, 20, JT maybe, um, 20 plus. My recollection is it was in the 1990s, but yeah, so 20 is yeah, more than 20 years, and obviously we haven't had any attacks here, but if you read through these and and they talk about several of these, we've had this dog for ever since you know, the dog was born at five, uh, five you know we've had them for five years, we've had them for eight years, and we don't know what happened, they just attacked, so. I'm sure there's some that are great. I'm sure 
Um, it has a lot to do with who raises it, but a lot of these stories that were in here was not, you know, talking about, you know, they mistreat the dogs or uh, it was talking about this was their family dog. So um, it's really, really sad and I do not support the lifting of the ban. Mr. Mayor, I know you're in charge, oh, sorry. The public on. hearing is over and it's okay. public hearing is over. Sorry, completed. It's the conversations at the bench. All right. Mike, where are you getting those statistics from, may I ask? Is it dogbike.org? That, that's one of them, yes. Okay. That website has actually been proven to be completely false. Oh, that's not true. Well, no, it's, it's not. It's, it's very true, but that's okay. That, that's um, one of them, but okay, I cross-referenced what, cross cross uh, several of these. Okay. I mean, I'm not going to question you. No, on, I'm, on, I'm asking about your the site so I can look it up. That's, that's else. all I'm asking. I'll, I'll share it with you. Okay. It's just a reminder to everyone to please wait to be recognized by the mayor until you speak. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> yeah, yes, Shelby. Second. Second. Any further discussion? Just one more thing, Mayor, if, if, if you don't mind. Absolutely. Um, I, I hope nothing happens. I hope nothing severe happens in this. And I just want to be on record that, um, that I, I'm, I'm going to be against this. And if you vote for it and something happens, um, I mean, I'm sorry. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Um, so I've probably been up here the longest talking about this for many years and have also done a pretty tremendous amount of research, not just on dogbites.org, but there's probably four or five different ones, and there's plenty on the other side as well. And for a long time, I just felt like the threshold of overriding an existing law was needed to be pretty high. Um, we've had a significant amount of people that have said, no, we, we just need to lift this, so go do your job and do it. So my job is not to just listen to emotion, but to actually do research on it. Um, and while I would agree with everything that stats-wise, because it's not just on Dogs Bite, it's also on the national database of, of dogs, um, whatever, um, that's still such a tiny number compared to the number of pit bulls that are in the United States, and it's also not comparative to other dogs. I get it. Absolutely, the, the, the deaths overwhelmingly are by pit bulls. They just are. It's just data. You can go look it up. But it's still such a tiny number when there are, I think the last time I looked, there was three million pit bulls and there was a couple hundred, you know, attacks. That's nothing. Statistically, that is almost zero. It's terrible for the families. Don't get me wrong. Of course it is. Um, but when you're making a decision for all of society, you have to look at, at it a little differently. So I'm, f I, forever I was, I was okay with just leaving it as it is, and I'm not anymore. Um, but I put a crap ton of, of research into this on all angles. Everyone's very emotional about this. We had one of our council members leave because of this issue, I'm pretty certain. Um, so it's hard for us to sit up here and not be emotional about it, but um, going through, stepping back and looking at all the information and data and, and other things too, um, that's how I came up with my decision this tonight. When I was, there's few in here that are my age, JT, there's a handful of y'all. Before pit bulls become popular for what they were using them for as a, as a fighting animals, much like uh, roosters and everything else, Doberman pinchers were the thing. And we heard stories about this all the time. But when the dog got eight, nine, <coughs> ten years old, they would attack a child. Uh, I had a friend that had them, and every ten years he had to get another one. Why he kept getting them, I have no idea, because they would turn aggressive and and 
and, uh, and uh, mean. So th there's always been a boogeyman out there, and uh, I'm not of the opinion that pit bulls are one of them, uh, but uh, um, I've heard from enough people in the community that um, that they would like it to be lifted. So, but it, at the end of the day, it's for the council to decide what's best for the city of Andover. And um, that's where we're at this evening. Just for the discussion topic too, I think, you know, my takeaway, Mike, as well, is to strengthen up our, you know, the other part of the ordinances um, in regards to the vicious levels. And then when you go from, uh, uh, I can't remember the first level now, but two and three, that you can, after two years and then three years respectively, um, get off of that level, I, I think that needs to be changed as well. I mean, I don't think we should have any animals that have been on a vicious level, uh, you know, in the city either. But I think that's a different, you know, that's a different topic. But yeah. I, I think I, that would help. I agree. Um, some of that as well. So. Yeah. And, and Mr. Mayor, may I respond? Yeah. Um, Absolutely. I, you know, I, we were, those were some of the things we were talking about in our last workshop, you know, and that was one of the reasons why I, I wanted to, um, you know, let's talk about those items. Let's get those how we want those. And then we can, then if, you know, you, we can vote on all this at once, but, um, but now we're here tonight. So, uh, but I do agree with you that that does need to need to be, um, upgraded. Perhaps we can, Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Perhaps we could do that January workshop. Shore that up, make it appropriate. Because I, I, I'm sorry, may I? Sure. I can assure you, and this has been discussed to nauseam, uh, there is a dog that I personally don't believe should be in the city limits. And the only thing that saved me from getting mauled was a nine-volt a, a, a nine battery. So it's not that I'm rambunctious about doing away with Breed Pacific. I want to make it fair for all. And this legislation, this ordinance tonight, goes just to be clear, goes further than I wanted to go. But it's before us. Let's vote on it. And let's improve on what we have in the other ordinances. That's much what Homer's referring to, correct? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, is that your key okay? Or you said it was going to maul you? <laughs> <laughs> I'd make, I'd, it, it's always the little ones, man. You've heard this from every <laughs> mailman in the country. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so any further discussion? And I do appreciate, just so you know, uh, Mike, I appreciate your stance. And uh, everyone I put around me or, or have around me, I want them to be principled and stand with their convictions. So I do appreciate it. Uh, make no mistake. All right. So let's vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. Motion carries four to one. And just to be clear, um, That's fine. Um, and I've talked to a lot of pit bull owners, everyone in this room, you know, um, just because there's a law that says it doesn't need to be on a leash, in my opinion, it needs to be on a leash because it's a little dog that bites your dog and that's the one I'm gonna get a call about or your dog that nips at a little kid when the kid screams in its ear you know, it's just, it's up to, it's up to all of us. This is Andover, and we are, we are, I said something inappropriate. We're a very good community. We're a very eclectic community, and we respect, uh, we respect our community. So uh, that's where we're at. And I appreciate you all being here tonight, and I appreciate everybody's opinion. And the folks that emailed us, I appreciate your opinion as well. Thank you. All right. Mr. Mayor, the staff asked me to make one remark, which I think is important. Yes, please. Um, 
uh, the the law in Andover is changed by ordinance, but not until that ordinance is signed by the mayor and then published in the local local newspaper. And I just I wouldn't want a anybody to make a purchase today or tomorrow for Christmas or otherwise until that ordinance is properly published in the newspaper. And, it, and it, when it's when it's changed, it will be posted on the city website. Correct. It'll be posted on Saturday. Pardon me. Can you state your name, young lady? <laughs> Somewhere in Kansas. All right, thank you. <laughs> thank you, JT, for pointing that out to us. Very important. All right. <laughs> uh, Les Mangus is going to join us via Zoom and talk about 11 1 Prairie Creek Preliminary PUD Amendment Z 2020 06. Right? You sure? He's somewhere. There he is. Well, I'm trying. Good evening. <laughs> evening. This amendment is a pretty simple amendment to the text of the PD. If you can imagine back in 2006 when the Prairie Creek Commission was uh, being put together by the developer Paul Kelsey, it went really out in the country. There were no public water sources. To that subdivision. Today, 15 years later, World Water District 5 serves the subdivision itself and some of the adjoining properties. Uh, Wichita Water serves properties all the way over to Prairie Creek Road. So conditions have changed since that original PUD when there was a, a fear for a new subdivision with or 500 lots that might all sink irrigation wells and deplete the subsurface water that many of the surrounding properties use for potable water. The developer has, has come to us with this, this change that's very specific only to those duplex lots on the west side of Frankfurt Road, north of 13th Street, to allow six water wells that people use to irrigate all of the commonly owned properties in that 41 lot duplex subdivision. Hmm. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. Les, if I can ask a question. So you're saying that the PUD for Prairie Creek and as far as dropping wells, all the other properties in all of the Prairie Creek divisions are barred from putting in a well themselves, then? Correct. This amendment is only to do with parcel two, the duplexes. And the duplexes, and they're owned by... would be required to lift that same prohibition from parcel one, the single family parcel. Right, and so, but this is owned by the developer, correct? Different developer. Okay. I just think it's odd that we're allowing the developer to put in wells, but none of the actual residents. Currently, the same owner owns all 41 of those duplex lots and all of the homes that are built and occupied. Okay, but eventually he's going to sell them and not own them, and now only those residents would then be allowed to have wells and any of the other ones won't? Remember, there's six wells there for 41 lots. Okay. And as opposed to if this prohibition were lifted from parcel one, the single-family homes, there is the potential there for... 353 single family wells. I just feel the optics of it is that we're giving the developer the right to drop wells and none of the residents. And it just doesn't, in my, just, in my eyes, it just seems kind of wrong. I don't know. I get why he's doing it. The, it's helpful. It's cheaper, but. We're not the applicant here. I know. 
the owner of parcel two has come to us with this amendment. No one has made application to amend parcel one. If I was a resident on parcel one, would I have to amend the whole parcel to do my lot? Yes, there's a general provision that prohibits now. individual irrigation wells. Now, there is an allowance for the common reserves to use irrigation wells. I thought there was a state law that you were you could put in a, a well, actually, if you owned the land. I didn't think that we could really prohibit that. I guess I'm wrong, but I feel like there's a state law that allowed it. Am I wrong, JT? And not for residential use wells. I don't think there's any uh, state limitation on a residential well unless it's imposed by zoning, which is the case here. Okay. Uh, I don't think we answered Homer's question, though, and I want to make sure Les understood it. He's simply asking. I don't know if he can hear you. Can you hear me, Les? Yes, I can hear you, JT. Okay. Sorry. Uh, I, I'm. I, maybe I misunderstood the question. I just want to be clear for everybody. I thought you were asking whether the owner of a lot could come and ask to have their lot amended or rezoned. Uh, just just their lot as the owner and apply to have the zoning changed on their lot with respect to this rule and was that the question you answered Les? A prohibition is, is a parcel provision so it applies to all of parcel one, the whole 160 acres. I suppose if a person wanted to go through the time and expense to make application to amend that prohibition to affect just one lot they could. Nothing would prohibit them from doing that. But it would behoove them to get the, all the neighbors to do it as well, correct? Correct. Financially speaking and such. It, it, my, my, my point was I think it is legally possible and I, I'm not sure that that. Thank you, so, JT. It, it's, it's worth mentioning that the intention of this uh, the gentleman, these duplexes are live-in only. They do all the maintenance. They have a, they have a track record of several cities, Derby, Goddard, to where if you rent half a duplex, the neighbor doesn't mow his lawn or water his lawn. They're trying to avoid that from happening. You know what I mean? Like if you buy a house, your neighbor's not necessarily obligated to, to take care of their lawn. His situation is they take care of the, they take care of it much like an apartment, so that you don't mow, you don't water, it's all taken care of, so that they all look nice. Their intent is for it to, to be upscale and not, for someone not to be able to come in and not take care of their property. They're not obligated to take care of the property. The owner of the, of the addition does. Isn't that correct? That's correct. It is common maintenance. They even got a right of way so they can go in and take care of everything. If you drive through there, you can look right through and you can see that they can get into every property and take care of all the lawn mowing and everything. So its intentions are good. And, and Mr. Mayor, I understand that. I guess to maybe, maybe to Troy's point, or I guess more of my question is, we're gonna allow it on this section, but then someone buys a house on parcel one and then they're going to have to go through all this too to say hey i want yep. green grass and and do a well yeah so why don't we just do it all now that ain't the way it works is it less oh yeah, yeah. that uh, application that we don't have <laughs> yeah. oh, mr mayor application was very specific to parcel two by the owner of parcel two. Ten four. okay mr. so mayor i have a question for Les. Yes, sir um, so what kind, just so we can put it out there, um, whoever do, does own lots in parcel one, um, what kind of expense are you talking about? I mean, it's mostly paperwork expense, correct? If they wanted to lift that off of parcel one? Right. There is an application fee. And then to have someone redraw 
the planning unit developed a plan to incorporate this really simple text change. Couldn't you just use the existing plat that's there and yeah, couldn't you just use the existing plat? Sure, they could use that as a base. Okay. Hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, forgive me, y'all. Uh, we need. I need to back up and do some housekeeping. All right. Um, uh, so I'm going to start. I, I now call the agenda 11-1 zoning case number Z-2020-06. This application is to amend Prairie Creek preliminary planned unit development planned unit develop. Dad, gum it. Unit. <laughs> Unit development plan to allow for six six water wells within 41 resident lots for the purpose of irrigation on property generally located on the northeast corner of North Prairie Creek Road and thir East 13th Street. And so before we proceed with the hearing, I'll ask counsel if any of them intend to disqualify themselves from participating in this case because they have a conflict of interest. No. Nope. Negative. Ex parte communication. I will now ask this council if any of them have received any ex parte verbal or written communications prior to this agenda item, which would which they would like to share. No. Nope. No. Has the city clerk received any protest? Gosh, dang, man, I'm having trouble tonight, folks. Has the city clerk received any protest petitions on this case? When, I, may I ask a question, yes. Susan? When, when you say it like that, yeah. it almost sounds like there was one, but it just wasn't within that time frame. That's why. Okay, so there wasn't one even outside either of that time frame you just said. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Sorry. Thanks. I know. That's Sorry, Mr. Mayor. Would you have told us if there was one after the date? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you. May I continue? Moving forward, I just wanted to make sure. I May I continue? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. I now ask council members if they have all received copies of draft minutes of the Planning Commission for November 17, 2020, which summarizes the hearing on the case. Yes. 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 All right. Now, I call on Les Mangus, City Zoning Administrator, to provide us with a report on this case, which I believe you already have. Correct? Yes, sir. You did a fine job, too. <laughs> Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. I move to adopt the Planning Commission's findings of fact and recommendation for approval for zoning cases Z-2020-06 and approve an ordinance amending the Prairie Creek Edition Preliminary Planned Unit Development Plan. Period. Second. Mr. Mayor, I do have a question for Les. Why was there a prohibition put on it in the first place? If you can imagine him back in 2006, there was no public water out there, and there are several surrounding developments their sole source of potable water was subsurface water, and there was a fear that if all three, the 153 of these single-family homes dropped a well in for irrigation, they would deplete both the water source, but others are using potable water. Hmm. Thanks. Mr. Mayor, I have one more thing. Sure. Um, on parcel one, if you had quite a bit of homeowners come uh, and request um, help on lifting that ban on the water wells. Um, would you, as the owner, um, help them out with the plat portion of it? Yes, sir. 
by redrawing or helping redraw the the plat? Yes, good evening. Phil Meyer with Boffman Company, agent for the applicant. And yes, if the homeowners or homeowners association came to us, we'd be willing to help them. Okay, thank you. Okay, we need to back up a little bit still, don't we know? We good? Can we go back to 10? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I don't, I don't have the checklist, Mr. Mayor. I just thought you might ask bef before we make a final decision if there's any new information that wasn't presented at the public hearing that needs to Is be Is there any? Uh, yes, thank you, sir. Uh, do we have any public comments? We, we would like to welcome anyone interested in the agenda item, lay out a few ground rules. Please come to the podium, give your name, your address, comments. From individual members of the public will be limited to three minutes. The governing body has provided the draft minutes and the video of public hearing has been made available. So please limit your comments to information not previously shared at the public hearing held on November 17, 2020. Does anybody have any new information? Does the applicant have any further response to public comments? Okay, now council deliberation. Any more questions? We bounced around all over the place there, didn't we? Yeah, I know it. <laughs> I'm very effective at this. <laughs> I'm reading a book about that. So, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. All right, I now call agenda item 11-2, zoning case number Z-2020-07. This is an applicant to ch application to change the zoning district classification from a single family one, single family residence slash low density district to a multifamily two attached single family residential district on property generally located at 309 West Turnpike Road, Andover, Kansas. Before we proceed, we before we proceed with the hearing, I'd like to ask council if any of them intend to disqualify themselves from participating in this case because they have conflict of interest. No. No. I will now ask council if any of them have received any ex parte verbal or written communication prior to this agenda item, which they would like to share. No. Has the city clerk received any protest petitions on this case? Thank you. I now ask the council members if they have all received copies of the draft minutes of the Planning Commission for November 17, 2020, which summarizes the hearing of the case. Yes. Yes. Oh, well, y'all are loud tonight. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I now call on City Zoning Administrator Les E. Mangus to provide us with a report on this case. All you. Jenny, Jenny asked me to rejoin the meeting. Apparently, there was some difficulty there with the audio. Is this better? Yes. Great. Great. Uh, no, it's the same, but go ahead. <laughs> Would you stop? I, I'm sorry, Les. Go ahead, sir. This is a little under two major applications. There's an existing single family home on the property. The new owners of the property simply would like to uh, demolish the existing single family home on the property and construct some multi family dwellings, as is, uh, is uh, a practice that's, that's become fairly common up in that uh, older part of Andover on some properties that are large lots that are. Any questions? No? I do have one, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Les, you say underutilized. Was there anything besides residential that it was used for before, prior to 
you know, in the last 10 years, I guess. It's since made a single family residence on a two acre lot. Thank you. It's a block home, and if you're not familiar with the area, um, it's going to be difficult for them because there's no true access to the back of that property from a legal road. So they have issues that they'll have to deal with, but it's their issues to deal with. That was actually my question. Yeah. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I'd move to adopt the Planning Commission's findings of fact and recommendations for approval for zoning case Z-202007 and approve an ordinance changing the zoning district classification from SF-1 single family resident slash low density to MF-2 attached single family residential district on property generally located at 309 West Turnpike Road, Annenberg, Kansas. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Sorry, I'm going to have to back up again because I'm, I'm having issues tonight. It's all right, Mr. Mayor. I, I don't think there was anyone from the public here wishing to address this item. If you can just confirm that, I think we'll be all right. All right. Um, any app, the applicant present this evening? Okay. Okay. <laughs> any public <laughs> any public comments? We would welcome you to everyone interested in this agenda item to lay out a few ground rules, yada yada. Come to the podium, give your name, address, comments from individual members of the public. We'll be limited to three minutes. The governing body has provided their draft minutes and video of public hearing has been available, so please limit your comments not previously shared at the public hearing. All right. Does the public, any further response from the applicants? No? All right. Did you say yada, yada, yada? I did. I okay, I just said, yeah. making sure, pull the sign tilt on us there a little. Um, since, we've, since we've allowed the applicant and, and uh, the public to speak and there were no comments, I might just simply ask that you re-ratify the uh, the motion and make yeah. sure that the vote remains the same. Still, still yeah. make the motion. Yeah. Y yes, please. please. No, I just did. I so moved again. Okay, second. Uh, yeah, second. Second, <clears throat> a second time. All right, no further discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All right. Hmm. It's only been a year you'd think I'd know how to do this, but right? apparently not. <laughs> Third one's a charm tonight. <laughs> thank now, you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thanks, guys. I now call agenda item 11.3, zoning case number Z-2020-09. This applicant requesting an amendment to the Green Valley Greens planned unit development plan to amend the use of parcel one to allow for child care on a property generally located at 425 Green Valley Drive. Before we proceed with the hearing, I'll ask the council if any of them intend to disqualify themselves from participating in this case because they have a conflict of interest. Mm -mm. No. No. I will now ask council if any of them have received any ex parte verbal or written communication prior to this agenda item which they would like to share. No. City clerk received any protest protest petitions on this case. No protest petitions were filed at the time. Required 15 days following the public hearing of the planning commission meeting on November 17th, 2020. I now ask the city council members if they have received copies of the draft minutes of the planning commission for November 17th, 2020, which summarizes the hearing of the case. Yes. I now call on City Zoning Administrator Les E. Mangus to provide us with a report on this case. This is a very simple amendment to the Green Valley PUD. This PUD dates back to something like 1980. The Assembly of God Church, now the generation of spirits that have been one of the first occupants of that plan unit development. Particular parcel that that trench is located in 
is limited to the church and open space only. The church desires to utilize their space and to operate the child care facility. But in order to do that, they need to go through this process to amend the plan unit development to allow that permitted use for a child care facility. Are there any questions for questions to zoning administrator from the council members? Have any written communications been received from the clerk? No. That's what it says on my deal right here. Yes, yes, exactly. No, I have not received anything. Does the applicant wish to present any new information? We would like to uh, welcome any, everyone interested in this agenda item and lay out a few ground rules. Please come to the podium, give your name, address, comments from individual members of the public. We'll be limited to three minutes. The govern, governing body has been provided the draft minutes and the video of the public hearing has been made available. <clears throat> so please limit your comments and to comments to information not previously shared at the public hearing held on November 17th, 2020. Okay. Does the applicant have any further responses to the public comments? Nope. Assuming council has received all the information they need on this case, you have received an outline of the choices provided under the in state statute statutes for council actions KSA 12-757C. How do you wish to act? Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Move to adopt the Planning Commission's findings of fact and recommendation for approval for zoning case Z2020-09 and approve an ordinance amending the Green Valley Greens planned unit development plan. Second. Second. Any further discussion? I do have one question. Less, um, why was this part of the Green Valley Flats. Well, it's, it's kind of odd, isn't it? I thought that was Green Valley right there. Uh, not really. Our zoning regulations today would require a conditional use for a child care facility. There was enough thought put into this plan and it was developed back in 1980 that they, they thought that they wanted to limit the uses to that church and the church only. And if the church wanted to add any potential uses in the future, they would have to go through the process and the public hearings to let the neighborhood know that they intend to operate something beyond the church. So, so the plan was to have a church there when this plat was designed? Yes, that was, okay. the, that was the sole use for this plan. And correct me if I'm wrong, this is not the original church that it was. When it's, they've changed, changed names or. They have changed names. Yes. Okay. Any further questions? Let's vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, zero. God darn, Ronnie, I'm tripping tonight, folks. Mr. Uh, Mayor. Yes, sir. I have a quick question. Yeah. So when I made the motion earlier to create 14.5. That's after your mayoral appointment, which means that the new council member would be part of the executive session. So should I actually change it to before the executive session, or should the new person be in the executive session with us? So you're going to have to apologize. My ignorance here is the new person present. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's entirely up to the council. I'm fine. Yeah, that's cool. Hey, you get your first executive Try. session tonight. <laughs> Um, Which you can't talk about to anyone, including your family afterwards. Just thought I'd throw that out there to you. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Thanks. Can we move on? Sure. All right. They'll have to be here when you get out of it as well. <laughs> 45 minutes. 10 minutes. I know. Um, <laughs> please. 911 communication purchase. Uh, Becky Day. Voice Products Incorporated. Communication recording upgrade. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, City Council. 
I'll make this as quick as I can. Um, today I'm just requesting the approval to purchase an upgrade to our nice inform recorder. This recorder was purchased in 2012 and throughout the years we've been able to perform upgrades as needed, but with Windows 10 and end of life equipment, we're needing to purchase an upgrade to replace our aging system. The system records our 911 lines, um, the non-emergency lines within the department and radio channels utilized by the police department and fire department. If this system were to fail, we would lose access to not only our current recordings, but our archived recordings as well. Um, I'm requesting to purchase just a replacement of a total cost of $18,000 $348, as well as the approval to purchase an extended support package, which would give us tech support 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, um, with that cost beginning in 2021. Um, all funds would be paid for with the Andover Emergency um, Communications E911 tax funds, um, which I have already set back for 2020 knowing that this was going to come. Do you have any questions? I, I have I, a question. Go ahead, Hummer. Sorry. Oh, well, I got to go first before <laughs> Troy. Um, Days before beauty. I, it might be a question to Jenny. Don't mean to surprise you with it, but uh, I know, I believe, Becky, in your presentation or in the, the notes here, you talked about COVID and going forward. Is there no way we can use the Sparks money for this purchase? That ship has sailed. <laughs> no, I'm sorry that we our window has closed on that. So we had to have get um, put those requests in. I believe it was July that we put those in. Um, yeah. But there's always a possibility for more money to come around later. But if this is something they need now, there is no Sparks money available. Yes. Okay. I just wondered. Why. Yeah, I have something too. But. Yeah, I was just gonna, and it's probably in here, and I just didn't see it. But they're they're gonna take all the old recordings and move them all into the new system so you can go so back. So they're going to be on like a, a legacy cloud. So we will have access to all of our old recordings. And then this new recording system is going to have an updated um, storage for it, more of a cloud base with a backup to it as well. So the, and the previous ones were not backed up? No, they are on a tape. That's pretty um, oh. And I have to switch awesome. the tapes out every so often. Okay. Yeah. And they're searchable, though? Like the they, they are searchable. Um, we did have about a 24-hour uh, failure back in 2016. Um, but I have recordings back to February of 2015 currently. Um, the state mandate is 60 days. We far um, go over that. Cool. How long do you legally have to keep the recordings? 60 days. So it's not years, but just 60 days. Just 60 days, yes. Okay. We um, we do keep them much longer than that. Yeah. But I, I do see on here that you do have a savings of $33,800 as well. Correct. That so is trading well, in the older equipment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's well, well I mean, that's good to note on there just so everybody can see that. We're not spending fifty-two thousand, which we could have be, be spending. It's only eighteen. What is the life expectancy of this? Um, Till Windows I, Twelve. I think with with technology, I I, I don't know that. I know the current system we got in two thousand and twelve. It's not uncommon to have to replace these every ten or so years. Um, it mainly has to, it depends on how many upgrades we can do before the system can't take any more upgrades. Becky, does having this help our CALEA accreditation with the 911? It is a standard that we have to meet, um, but there's also a state standard that we have to meet. Um, it's, an, it's a NINA standard, and we have to do it CALEA or not. Okay, thank you. I, I noticed in here it includes text to 911 recording licenses. Are we, can we text 911? Yes, we can text to 911. And currently, I have the capability to pull the text messages from our the NG 911 system. Um, it is difficult, and the spelling and everything gets garbled. Um, so this will allow it on the same recording that our voice recordings are on. 
Do you get a lot of texts to 911s? I didn't usually, even know you had the Usually, usually it's a, a child getting a hold of a phone. Um, we test every dispatcher has to test it every month to make sure that it's working and that they stay familiar with it. But outside of that, we haven't had any actual emergencies through text. Okay. Don't look at me. It was my Apple Watch. I didn't mean to. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I move to approve and authorize the communications director to purchase a voice and in inform recorder from Voice Products LLC in the amount of $18,348 and the extended support package in the amount of $9,878 as presented. Second. Second. Any further discussion? Have you had other bids for this? Pro for, for this? Um, I have not since we're replacing the current system. I, I didn't go to, to other systems. Um, if it went to other systems, I could lose the actual recordings. Are there other systems out there, though? Um, there are other systems out there. Um, I'm not familiar with how they work. Every 911 center I've worked in has used a nice inform. Um, I think they're more user-friendly and accessible to your archive data. That's a good question, though. Sorry, how many 911 centers have, have you worked like with or Three. seen? This is the third. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? Let's vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. 13-1 rep recommendation. 13. 14. 13. 13.13. Oh, we didn't move? 13-1. Oh, we're just not gonna. We're just gonna skip over their employee pay plan. <laughs> oh, they don't need it. We're good. <laughs> we're good. Oh, Troy. My bag. <laughs> Sorry, Ryan. Okay. Um, in regards to the 2021 employee employee play pay, I cannot talk tonight. Pay, pay plan. plan. Um, the salary review State committee. Your name, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Chastity Page, director Chastity of Page. HR. Um, the Salary Review Committee, uh, which consisted of Mayor Price and Council Members Henry and Carcelloway. Can I say that right, Shelby? Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> we, we all met um, with Jenny, um, City Administrator, and myself uh, last week, and uh, we reviewed the evaluations of the exempt employees and um, discussed the proposed play pl pay plan that is on the agenda for tonight. Um, as you'll recall, uh, City Council included a 4% raise pool for the 2021 budget, which consisted of a 2.5 merit and a 1% COLA effective July 1st, as well as a half percent additional merit for those who receive the highest score of exceptional. Um, for the most part, the uh, Pay plan consists of those COLA merit and some scheduled longevity um, and step raises. There are a few exceptions included in this pay plan. Uh, two employees who have been in their positions for at least three years will receive additional pay, increased to get them to 85% of midpoint, which is uh, consistent with our recent salary study as to where we should be. Uh, two part-time employees, um, which was an, the addition to your packet this afternoon, um, that were hired within the last six months will be receiving additional pay increase to get them to the minimum for their positions. One employee was owed a step increase due to failing to receive a status change from training to regular status in 2020. And then also we have three long-term employees who have um, reached the top of their pay scale. Um, basically, they don't have anywhere else to go, so they uh, were not eligible to receive their full COLA and merit increase. Uh, we propose that um, these employees who have been impacted, we give them half the difference between what they're receiving and what they would have received if it had not been for the cap um, as a flat bonus to be received in July of 2021. Any questions? Mr. Mayor? 
I move to approve the 2021 salary pay plan as recommended by the salary review committee. Can I do that since I was on the committee? Yes, you may. It's not a conflict of authorities. Second. Any further discussion? I just have a, a few comments. Uh, I know I brought this up months ago when we were talking about salary increases months and months ago. Mm -hmm. I don't know when that was. That was probably Shh. spring, probably. And, and of course, COVID was going on. And uh, people all over our city had, you know, were, were losing their jobs. Um, their jobs were put on hold. And I'm, I'm 100% for raises. And, but, uh, and I'm just, I'm just, I'm on the edge here of, uh, I'm just talking out loud here. Uh, yes or no, because, and, I, and I've, I've been feeling this way, because we've had people who've been put on furloughs, not getting paid, uh, some people losing their jobs, and we as a city are about to give everyone raises from this past year. Uh, do they have, do they deserve it? Yes, they do. Uh, I, I completely agree with it. But, uh, but, but by looking outside the city and seeing outside the city building as a business and looking at our residents that live here, um, I'm not sure how, how, how good that looks, that we're giving raises to our city employees when we've had so many people who have lost their jobs. Um, and we've, I'm pretty sure we've lost tax um, money that's come in because of businesses that have been shut down. And, but we're still, you know, giving raises. So, um, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'll, I'm going to vote yes for this, but I, I, I really don't agree with it. And, and Mr. Mayor, if you don't yes, mind, sir. Mike, to your point, you, you weren't forgotten about because I, I did remember that. And so I did bring it up as, as the committee and I appreciate you guys giving me and, and Shelby the opportunity to be on the committee. And, and I think that was brought up. And so one of the thought processes, and I'll speak for myself, you know, maybe for the committee as well, if, unless they object, but um, I, I think taking COVID out of the equation, like you said, do they deserve it? Yes. We took COVID out of the equation. We all unanimously, I think, said yes to the, the plan. And that's why we went ahead and went forth with it. But I don't want you to think that we didn't, even remember that it was in the spring that we did have some discussion about that at the workshop, so. Jenny, would you like to say something? I was just, I was going to comment and clarify a little bit on the tax situation. Um, Andover finds itself in a strange position, um, probably from a lot of cities. We're actually doing incredibly well on our sales tax. Um, we have um, just over $100,000 more in 2020 than we had in 2019. Why? Because everybody's at home. Grocery but stores. they're spending all that money just the same and more than they were last year. So instead of going to Lowe's to buy your chairs for your back deck, you're ordering them from Lowe's from your living room. And yay, happy coincidence for Andover, we get that sales tax now. Whereas if you've driven to Wichita and picked them up, they got the sales tax. So really? it's a strange, it's a strange deal because of the consumption sales tax, um, the way all of that online purchasing happened. Um, suburbs like us have done really well. Cities that have lost in this are the big cities because you're not going into those city centers to work. You're not buying lunch there like you did when you worked there every day. You're not um, stopping and getting your groceries there. You're, you're buying them probably locally. You might have them delivered to your home. Um, tourist communities are hurting very badly. They don't have people coming to visit them. Cities with casinos or large venues that make up most of their economy are hurting. We are in the strange, happy stance that we just haven't had that experience. Indicators of, of the trouble for our citizens are hard to say because we do have a greater delinquency in the property tax um, we're right at 5%. We're typically two to three. 
but I will tell you those are commercial that have not paid. And really it's one large commercial payer that would probably bring that percentage back up. It is not a bunch of residents. So that's kind of the indicators we have on how people are personally doing. Um, I would anticipate 2021 may be harder on people um, depending on if um, some of the stimulus money, a lot of why the economies continue to do so well is so much stimulus was pumped in at one time. And to be clear, we, we discussed this a long time. It wasn't a, I, we was on Zoom for a long time because there was pushback on a lot of it from just about everybody actually. Because it was, we're, I have the same with you, the optics is not good. Mm -hmm. But you know, at one point I was standing in line at Ace Hardware, and I've lived here for 30 years, and I was clear back at the dog food aisle, you know. So there are some stores in town that have uh, not some only. Some of us benefit from that, too. So I Pardon? That. I, some of us benefit from that. So I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, so it is it is a mixed bag. I agree with you, Mike. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? Have we got anything back from medical insurance? Uh, no, we have not. Uh, we expect to have that back uh, by the end of this week, okay. is what we've heard from IMA. Okay. Any further discussion? Let's vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. Thank you. 14-1, vacant city council seat. Do we, what do we do? Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. Oh, I was going to say, he needs to come up and like give his entire history real quick. Yeah. yeah. If he can just read <laughs> over. No, I'm kidding. You don't have to do <laughs> Read over his resume. Uh, Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. I move to approve the mayoral appointment of Dr. Joseph Foread of Andover City Council effective today, December 8th, 2020, with the term expiring in January of 2022. Second. Any, any further discussion? Let's vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. All right. Woo! You want to join us? Oh, wait. He's got to do this thing. He's got to do it. I'm going to take you to the back room. That's fine. Slow down, Troy. Slow down. Sorry. Susan's got to get your picture. Hardest part about this. Discharge the duties of a city council member of the city of Amber, of the city of Amber. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you, sir. <laughs> we, all take our, we all take our turns for that. So. All right. We both graduated from Augusta in time. I throw that out there. <laughs> so, yeah. So you know him perfectly. Wow. It's the water. <laughs> it's the water. Well, he's much stronger than I am, though, so I didn't drink enough water, <laughs> apparently. Uh, uh, it's All nice right. to have you on board, and also uh, uh, congratulations to your daughter, Maddie, for graduating Air Force boot camp. Yeah. All right. So now I need a. Uh, Motion to uh, Mr. M oh, go ahead. Did you want to finish? Go yourself? ahead, sir. Mr. Mayor, I move to recess into executive session for the consultation with the city attorney, which would be deemed privileged in the attorney client relationship per KSA 75 4319 B2. The session includes include the governing body, city attorney, his assistant, community development director, and city administrator. The open meeting will resume at 8 36. 
Second. I'm having so much trouble tonight. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? 6 0.
Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I move to recess in an executive session for consultation with the city attorney and his associate, which would be deemed privileged in the attorney-client relationship per KSA 75439B2. The session to include the governing body, city attorney, community development director, and city administrator. The open meeting will resume at 851. Second. Yes. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries 6-0.
So not quite the same. Huh? Right, we cannot. Yeah. Member items, sir. Member items. Anybody have anything they would like to share? I wanted to welcome Dr. Ford. It's very nice to have you on board. Good to see a familiar face. And I like the doctor in front of it, too. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Thank you, Troy. I could say a lot of things, but I'll stop there. How about that? <laughs> just just to give you, give you all some insight, how I met how I met Joe. He comes staggering into uh, the rest of Rooster, of course, uh, oh, about 10 minutes after I got uh, sworn in. And right away, he started asking me how to do that, what's it like. He showed interest of, of wanting to run. And we never dreamed that something would open up like this. But every time I talked to him, he was... Uh, uh, about serving the city and running for council. So he was also part of the community that the city annexed in, so uh, bicentennial, and he's very familiar with a lot of the folks out there, good, better, and different. And uh, so that had a lot to do with it and just uh, his hunger and drive from the very first time we met, and I was still, I was still uh, very foolish. A uh, young mayor, as it were, and uh, he just really—he really got my attention when he was that driven to uh, to serve. Especially after I just walked 14,000 miles trying to get elected myself, you know, to to, to see that. So it, it played a lot into it. But I'll be honest with you, there was a handful of really good, in my opinion, really good people wanting wanting the spot, and. Uh, it was one of the harder decisions I've made to date because I just, uh, there's only one seat. And uh, uh, Joe, in my opinion, was the, the one to help uh, see us through this next year. So I appreciate you, appreciate you uh, uh, stepping up. I appreciate it a lot, Joe. I just want to say, uh to the chamber and the city, um, you know, Katie for putting on the light competition and the chamber for putting on the moose competition. It's been fun to see around town. Uh, I guess, I don't know if it's a point of order necessarily, but I did not make all the moose. Um, there was others that made the moose, so I only made five, but, and I don't know which ones my moose went to, but there's some pretty cool ones out there. <laughs> Correct. Mine are the ones probably blown over and don't uh, fit right. Um, but hopefully only the businesses know those five. So anyway, and then the, the light competition was amazing that the city put on. Um, uh, you know, and I think there's prizes awarded Thursday? The Thursday the 10th um, on the Facebook app will be the results. So I told Chastity, I'll give kudos to the staff for all their hard work and I'll let you give the details because she's got a printout. So why don't we let her talk about the details of Thursday night? That is perfect. I don't even know how we found out that she would have the details right here. Amazing, right? Wow. All right. So as Homer um, alluded to, Thursday night we will be uh, announcing the winners of the holiday lights, uh, the Christmas raffle winners and the Caring and Sharing Online Donation Raffle winner, um, which that winner will, will receive the uh, disc golf bag and discs that they will hopefully be able to use at Central Park here in the near future. 
Yes. Um, we will be doing that at 5.30 on um, Facebook is where we will be posting that. And we'll be doing a, a video or a live to announce that. Yeah, cool. um, I also want to let everyone know that Thursday is our official hometown Christmas day. Um, it is also going to be our final uh, donation drive for caring and sharing. So caring and sharing will have volunteers out here in Central Park at the library parking lot. Um, so they will be here from six to nine and you can bring in food, uh, new toys, money, uh, anything you'd like to donate for caring and sharing. And then we'll have Santa back one more time from six to nine as well. And he will actually be out in front of the library waving to everyone. So everyone can see Santa one last time before he has to head back to the North Pole and get ready for Christmas. And then obviously we'll still have the lights uh, going on here in Central Park. Six to nine Thank on Thursday. Six to nine on Thursday. Thank you. Thanks, Chastity. The and then I also look good. I'm sorry. Yeah, the lights do look good outside. Yeah, and I, and I think it, it's uh, it's cool to see personalities come out. Um, you know, when you're doing doing the lights, um, Rick and I don't know if you guys noticed this, but some of the lights that may seem a little dimmer, I think they're solar powered. They are. Um, so I think that's pretty cool for uh, the city and an environment. Um, especially going on in the parks, um, the parks area. Um, so I, I, you know, to that point, I, I love it. Um, Tim, to your point last week, or I'm sorry, last meeting in regards to suicide and suicide prevention, um, you know, this is the season that it gets hard for some people out there. And so I just want to make sure um, the community knows that if you don't think you have value, you have value no matter what you're doing, um, whether it's you work at a pharmacy or, you know, maybe you install roofs, you've got value. So don't, don't think you don't and definitely reach out to, to me, anyone, um, and just talk, talk it through before, um, you do anything else. So thank you and welcome doctor. I'm glad your family's never mind. <laughs> 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 right, they're all Taco Tuesday. By the, by the way, he's got a twin brother that's better looking. So, oh. Not sure how that works. Mr. Mayor, I just want to reach out to Rick and his team and let him know that yeah. the lights look amazing. I know Mr. Homer over there said that. Um, I know he's been going through a lot with those lights, trying to get everything going, and um, between server issues and wireless issues and everything like that. So, but. Um, I just want to thank Rick and the team, the parks team, the streets, basically everybody I think in the city has hung lights over there. Um, and they look phenomenal. I know lots lots and lots of chatter on Nextdoor and every other Facebook app page that I'm on. So um, I would like to see m maybe the council think about maybe adding uh, yeah. actual Christmas light fund or Christmas light budget for him to spend. Um, I would really like to see Andover more of a destination place mm -hmm. where people drive through Central Park to see, you know, the massive light display that we have. Um, because, I mean, when they drive through Andover, they're going to stop at McDonald's or the Quick Shop or wherever to get a cup of hot cocoa and, and uh, enjoy our town. So I agree. You know, if we can do it a little bit each year, yeah. we can have something phenomenal by the time while well, I'm gone. So. Um, December 17th is the distribution for carrying and sharing. It's going to be at the fire station. So just kind of keep that in mind as well. Is there any help needed there? I don't believe so. I think Rocky got her. you have anything? The sure. team has it pretty well taken care of. I'm good. Have anything? Uh, yes, one thing. Uh, I'd like to give kudos uh, for us having a preliminary kind of in the ground um, um, of the disc golf park. So... Uh, Troy and I are going to go out tomorrow and, and throw disc at um, no, no baskets and uh, just uh, kind of uh, get the feel of it and, and see if there's, you know, one or two things we need to adjust. And, and, uh, but uh, we're getting very close. Dave North, Dave North is so excited he can't hardly stand it, man. You know Dave? Yes. He's, he's excited as he can be. I snuck out there today. It was fun. Pardon me? I snuck out and played today. Did you? Yeah, it was good. Good day. Beautiful day. Some of us work for a living, but that's all right. <laughs> Shelby, you got anything? You, sir? No question. All right. I, I lost track. All right. 
Does the doctor have anything? Dr. Joe, you have anything? And just so you know, this is the only night that they'll be nice to you. After this, it's, it's, it's over, man. That's coming from our young mayor. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to you know, thank the council for um, allowing me this opportunity to serve the community and to uh, learn uh, from you as well as I uh, uh, participate in this council and to uh, represent the citizens of Andover and uh, their needs. And, and uh, again, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome. Shelby, thank you for being here tonight under the circumstances. Yeah. My condolences, all right? All right. Motion to adjourn. Actually, can I oh, put one more item from staff? <laughs> I'm sorry. Chastity's got one more, and I'm going to blame it on Chastity. Wow. <laughs> so um, you're all aware of the League of Kansas Municipalities and their uh, Mask Up Kansas. Um, we decided to make that a little bit more personal, and I met today with um, the communications director for your uh, Andover Public Schools and Butler Community College and with Becky Wolf. And we are going to, uh, next week, we're really going to push Mask Up Andover. Um, we will be releasing more information towards the end of this week to kind of get everyone excited about it. And then uh, next week, we will be asking uh, community to do their part and mask up and show their maskies on um, social media and uh, post their why holding the posters. Um, we'll have a link on the website uh, for them to download the posters to print those off and they can write their, their why they wear a mask and post that on social media using the hashtag maskupandover. So be looking for that um, to flood your news feeds next week on social media. Thank you. Mask up, you filthy animal. Oh, goodness. What the, what's the matter with you, man? It's a Christmas it's movie. It's Christmas. It's a Christmas movie. Thank you. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? It was Home Alone Christmas movie impression. <laughs>